Okay, and we return for our second Egyptian level, the Obelisk of Camun, level 11. So, we follow the guide of a supernatural vision that Lara received when she put together the two pieces of the Skion, which she now has. And this vision pointed to the location of the third piece of the Skion. And it is somewhere in and around this city obelisk complex. A lovely glow up from its original form. Look at these hieroglyphs brought to detail and they actually look kind of hand-painted. Beautiful work. We've got a series of blocks here, and we're going to make our way through each and all. love how different this dynamic lighting has changed this room, where it was sort of previously quite bright and mostly illuminated. Now the light just pours down in a central kind of beam and the areas around are quite dark and shaded. It's just such a different feel. It feels like alive in a way that it never used to. And our final block. <laughs> Into another flooded chamber, very similar to the level we saw before in the city proper. I love this opening here, and if you look, it's actually kind of a cloudy skybox, totally absent in the original. Again, they had intended for light to be here because they've baked in that lighter the surface there. But now just brought to what they couldn't achieve, you know? And we've got those beautiful beams of light dancing there, coming down into the water. Great. Now this pool has a croc or two swimming around. If you can snipe them, I would recommend it. So they're just gonna get in our way. And this little um this little object here as well I noticed is really quite I don't know if it's gonna let me yes. Really 
beautifully brought into three dimensions. It's got shadow on it, there's bits that are darker, it's just lovely. And like every single hieroglyph on this pillar here, all redone. More effort than I ever thought we were going to get for our poor old Tomb Raider 1. We'll head into the water here. Because there's a couple of items we can grab. If I can remember where they all were. This is the big one, of course. We've got another of the Egyptian sapphire keys, some, would, some of which we saw in the previous level as well. Excellent. Okay, with the key in hand, we can actually leave this room and uh, grab that little medipack that I just saw. Alright, and we can use the sapphire key that we just picked up in the lock that we saw when we first walked in, just here. Alright, so it's opened this door, and it's opened the door over here. We'll go over here first. But we'll need this block to do it. I might recommend shotgun time. I I can't get over how much these look like actual like brush strokes and how much they look like they're painted straight onto the stonework render whatever whatever would have been used in ancient Egypt beyond my knowledge I'm afraid, but um, just gorgeous. Can you hear it clopping around? The hideous monsters born of the Skion and the Great Pyramid, as Lara saw in a vision. I always loved this room. I thought it would maybe be like where the rulers might have sat to recline, and this looks like maybe it was an ancient Egyptian uh, game. Or maybe it is just a table. But look how beautiful. These, I mean, they're so faithful, like down to the armrests and stuff. Beautiful work by Aspire. The fans, everybody that contributed. There is a sneaky little switch over here. Which will drop the first drawbridge. Okay, let's head over to this side. And I present to you the obelisk of Kamun. It is this uh, large structure jutting out over here. And we can see on each of its four sides, there is an Egyptian artifact of some kind. Now these will go into the obelisk we saw in the previous level when we arrived in the city of Kamun. And we will get there eventually. So we just picked up here, the Eye of Horus. The Egyptian god of light, the sun, renewal, and represented by a man with a hawk's head. So, at this point, we can actually hop down into the room below, into the waters below. We'll grab some goodies. Okay. So 
So through this door here is the door we unlocked with the key. It was just another way, it was just quicker to jump from there than to go all the way back down. How do we proceed with the level? Sneakily, there is an opening just here, kind of indis indistinguish almost indistinguishable from the others. Look at the difference. The shadow work, the stone work, that cracked tile there. It's more like... It's less obvious and a bit more shrouded in darkness, which I kind of like. Um, we'll just hop through here. And proceed. That was close. <sighs> oh, look at this sarcophagus here. Wow. Blurry, flat texture to detailed. Look how small the hieroglyphs there, and they're actually like they're scratched or they're uh, chipped in places as well. Beautiful amount of detail. And just look at this huge room with a light flooding in from that opening. I'll take a closer look when we're there. But just amazing. Look at that. Oh, that's stunning. Like, for one thing, it's totally sealed in the original, right? Again, we can see where they wanted the light to be. You can see it really bright at the top there. Obviously just couldn't do, didn't really have skyboxes back in the day. And I, I just love how it's just gushing the light against that back corner there, and this side's a little darker here. Just a beautiful touch. Just feels open now and alive and like I think it works really well with the sound of the wind ambience that runs through these Egyptian levels. So good. And I've gushed about this texture beneath me but like that cracking is really convincing. It's really really nice. All right the room in this little hat in this little hole here is a trap room. I do want to go inside just to have a look what they've done anyway. Even when they explode, they explode into effects, which they never used to. A very, very nice touch. I just wanted to have a look here. Oh, they've done that lovely, haven't they? Look how real that looks. And it's actually like the little um, frame is recessed from the hi hieroglyphic bits uh, in between. So faithful to. <laughs> Alright, so he really didn't need to go to that room, but again, this is more of a stop and smell the roses, check out the remaster playthrough if you haven't already uh, noticed. I've said it many times, but it's just such a love letter to the original fans. And again, like, I would have just been happy to be able to play them on a PS5. The fact that they look like this on a PS5 or modern hardware, whichever one you have, is um, it's really a gift. You know, I had a Sega Master System and I had a Sega Saturn. Master System was my first console and Sonic 2 was my first game. But when this game came, it stretched the imagination for what was possible in gaming. Like, nothing hit me up until that point, until this game came about. I remember being in, like, year three and having the game manual with me at school, drawing Lara. I became obsessed with her, you know? Hard not to.
is a closer look at the new skylight there. It's a big climb. Reminds me of St. Francis a little bit. Whoops. I almost gave myself a little heart attack there. I'm still getting used to maneuvering Lara with a stick. Not where I had intended to jump, but works just fine. Oh, I love these. We've seen a lot of this like 3D foliage since the very first level, but it actually sways ever so gently. It just peppers this top part of the level here. Big difference from the original. So, so great. That has lowered the second drawbridge there. If we head up here, there's a locked door, which we'll deal with a bit later. And you can pop back into this hole to get down to the lower levels. I'm not going to use that method because um, we still have a couple of secrets to grab, which we can sort of do on the way down. We'll start by grabbing some goodies in this little uh, balcony here. Harder to see them through the foliage. And look at these, look at these corrugated, rusted, weathered bars, fully 3D now. Again, the skeleton was there, you can kind of see they were meant to loop around in the middle between each bar, and they've done it. Such a, such a high attention to detail in this remaster. We're going to carefully walk through this foliage. I recommend maybe chucking a save here, which I'm actually going to do with you. And look at that. Shining down on the obelisk. Beautiful. Where it was just once flatness. Right, this is secret number one is on top of the obelisk, so we'll take a running jump. And then secret number two is actually just behind that white thing. You can, like, in the, I think in the original game it was a little bit more obvious. You can see the image of the Uzi clips um, popping out there from the right. A little harder to see in the remaster, but that's where it is. And I, that's why we saved, because this, this angle is a little tricky. You can just do another running jump and just tilt left ever so slightly in midair and it should get you there. Excellent. Let's grab the second artifact from the drawbridge that we raised. You don't need to hit this switch because of the way that we came down for now. Make sure you watch that there's a little gap here. I may have fallen down in the last playthrough and didn't save and had to climb all the way back up through the room with the sarcophagus. And we have a lovely ank, an Egyptian ank there. Look at even the little uh, altar, little small square altar where the objects were placed. That is a new addition. For that little bit there. Love that. Okay. So there's two more drawbridges, two more objects to get. And we also have the two drawbridges just here and two openings in them. We can go, if you like, to this one first. Ah, 
Look at the stones, they look a little embossed, they look pretty convincing. Big difference from very, like, angular, square uh, tiles, which is what they were essentially. Now they kind of almost look like an amalgam of um, stonework there. And we've got again a beautiful skylight, which was totally absent in the original game. Far more realistic lighting as well. I'm gonna chuck a little save here, just in case things get hairy. So we're going to be heading across the room. Let's begin. Now, if we hop up here, this is actually secret number three. Pretty simple secrets in comparison to the Greek levels. I mean, think about St. Francis's Folly as the first Greek level. How hard were those secrets? Crazed, right? I'll just top across here. <laughs> Love the shadow in this corner. Come on. So good. We're now opposite where we started. We're going to drop down there. And we're going to shimmy across this gap here. I love how the light and the shadows are working here. Just gorgeous. And across this one as well. We have to remark at Lara Croft's upper body strength. I know I couldn't I couldn't keep myself uh, perched like this for very long. see the obelisk on the other side of these bars and we have a switch for draw bid draw bridge number three beautiful all right we're gonna hop down to the bottom there where we can see there's more um, sort of coffins You know what that music is by now, and in fact I'm gonna I'm gonna preemptively heal and grab my mags. Just be careful with these two, they can kill you very quick. As they're pretty much doing to me. Not my most elegant work, I apologize. Let's head up this rock face here and get back into the room with the obelisk. Mm. 
And we're back to where we started. An elegant loop. Oh wow, it's actually three-dimensional now and kind of like rounded and yeah, gorgeous. The scarab. Beautiful. All right, that just leaves one more object and one more drawbridge. So let's, as I said, you probably don't need to pull this lever here. Don't worry about it. If we had taken the route from the top, um, it would be a different story. Now, you can see we're heading up. We can also head down. I'm just going to take us down for the sake of just exploring the whole level and looking at the, the changes that they've made. But I don't think it's necessary for you to go down at this point if you want to just get on with the rest of the level. Because if we had entered that hole in the very top floor, that's where we would have slid down from, okay? As you can see, I'm waiting for a little emergence. I have been burned very many times in Tomb Raider. <laughs> Lots of like little unexpected deaths that happen because um, things tend to jump you. Very different feel. It was very bright and open in the original. Not not unpleasant at all, but a, a bit more subdued, a little more enshrouded in mystery. Sneaky little switch over here. Whoops. And you see what that did? It turned that sand slide into solid stone that we can climb. Just going to double check we didn't leave nothing here. Alright, we're good. Okay, and we see we've got a slide here that we can't climb. So because I hit that switch below, it has switched this from a block to that. So now we can go back to that other switch and we can switch them back. So it sort of reverses between sloped sand and sand that you can climb. All right, beautiful. Let's head on up. Ooh, we are real high, and that is a long shimmy. So yeah, um, Tomb Raider 1 was one of the first games that really just made me fall in love with gaming. And the way that the 3D world was so realized back then, it changed everything for me. To the point where when it was announced that Tomb Raider 2 would not be coming to the Sega Saturn, which I had at the time, I bought a PlayStation just for Tomb Raider 2. Or rather, I got my parents to buy me a PlayStation <laughs> for Tomb Raider 2 because I was... Only in year three or four at the time. Okay, we got another slope we can't climb. Oh, look at these. Look how beautiful and hand-painted they look. What a difference, but so damn faithful. Oh, look, it almost looks like Horus with an ank. Gorgeous. They look so good. And that orangey reddy light. Sing it like this, guys. I never thought we would. Can you hear that clip clopping of those stalking, evil, nasty mummies? Again, better to be prepared going in. Yeah. 
You can probably jump up, do a standing jump and just shoot it, snipe it. I used to do that when I was younger, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just move on. Here is the final drawbridge switch. Okay, that is all four drawbridges done and dusted. Look at these shimmering, dancing beams of light, just shedding light on the ancient beauty that is the obelisk. Gorgeous. So, so different. Let's head down now into uh, to where, where we can reach the fourth object, where the obelisk uh, drawbridges are. You can either take the route of the secret that we did, which is a bit dicey, or you can just head down here. Bit by bit. And then just hop onto that slide. There we go. And that is the fourth and fi final trial of the obelisk. And there, to the victor goes the spoils. The door has opened to the one that has completed all the trials. Take a breath here, because this can be a bit of a long swim. Let's go. I believe there is a trophy for this section of grabbing all the items in the one breath, but I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> Let's be safe and grab some air here. I haven't really talked about it, but like the effect of like the water rippling off of her uh, submerged head there, that is not something we saw in the original game, at least not until Tomb Raider 3. So it's nice that it's sort of consistent across three games now. The trilogy, a great trilogy. You can also get a better look at the mummies now, which are much more rounded. Their teeth look really, like, sharp and kind of mismatched. A big difference from these uh, blocky polygons here. Looks like it's got, like, a, a vein or some kind of umbilical cord as well. Look at it stand upright. It's at very close proximity. They have taken chunks out of me in this level, I'll tell ya. <sighs> Just make sure we got all the secrets, there was only three, great. Um, okay. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Look at this. Look at this opening into a skybox here with a beautiful foliage. A black square. It was just blackness. Before skyboxes. What a glow up. And look how bright the room was as well. So they obviously always wanted light, but couldn't quite get the sky in there. Gorgeous. Look at this, ornamented with this foliage. Okay. We've got all four objects now. We have to make our way back to the city of Kamun. And if we look through these bars, we can actually see the room with a sarcophagi. Sarcophagi? Help me. Um, 
So we're running past and into the previous level. Kind of cool, right? Another irritant. That opening, again, so beautiful. What a difference. Centralizing the light, casting the corners in shadow. Just beautiful. And again, just really go- it vibes with the wind ambience that we hear through these levels, because it feels like there's just, like, strong winds pouring through, and they can only do that through openings, right? <laughs> and in the mastery of the beautiful level design of Tomb Raider 1, we have now arrived at that slope from the previous level, right? Yes, it's turned into stone blocks. And look at the light again coming in through here, casting shadows where we are. Sorry to keep gushing about it, but... Back again. And we may be back again in the DLC, wink. We'll get to that. We will insert the scarab. Hmm. Okay, those double doors we saw before, they... They relate to this obelisk. I never took a second to remark at these palm trees in the previous level. Look at the difference in their leaves and their branches sway. And the foliage density in that corner behind me there. Ah. I'm sorry guys, you probably have had to hear me say the same thing all the time about the foliage, but it's just, it's so pretty. And there we are, the doors forward. Now that trial, which was not easy, was put in place to protect whatever is, ever, whatever is behind these doors, so you can bet your bottom dollar the Skion is probably there. I forgot in the previous level I missed a pickup. It was above that obelisk. Sorry guys, just remembered it. Never mind. Like I said, this is more of a stop and smell the roses deal. Okay, that's the end of the level, guys. We're going to be surging forward into the sanctuary of the Skion. Please stick with me.